Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Cassandra, AKA the Daily Wealth Ninja, and I'm here today to talk about Forex. So if you're looking at the description at all on my Facebook Live or on my YouTube um, re repurposed video once this is put up, um, you'll see that I am on a mission to empower at least 10 people to become debt-free by the end of next year. And I, or rather by the end of this year, <laughs> And there's some there's so many different ways that you can do this, right? You can you can eliminate debt, you can increase your wealth, you can do so many different things. And before I get too much onto this topic of forex and what I'm going to be covering today, let me go ahead and make sure you can hear me, because I have done trainings before. Perfect. Thank you. So um, <laughs> I have done trainings before where somehow my my sound wasn't working. So now that I've confirmed that you can hear me, um, again I want to apologize. This is this is a day late. Um, yesterday, you know, I'm not trying to give excuses, but yesterday there was a massive storm in Dallas and I even broke my toe, not, not in the same, same time frame, but it was just, it was just a very interesting Sunday. Um, and it literally completely just bypassed my brain. <laughs> So I am sticking with my at least weekly, even if it's not on the Sundays, but I'm sticking with my at least weekly training on Forex. Hey, Robert, thanks so much for joining. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering candlesticks. So Japanese candlesticks, I go into this in my free five-day boot camp. If you want information on that, just go ahead and send Daily Wealth Ninja on Facebook this message, 5DBC. And what's going to happen is uh, you're going to get uh, information from my messenger bot. It's going to subscribe you to my – oh, it looks like it went away. Um, it's going to subscribe you to my, my Facebook messenger, which I only occasionally send out information on, so I'm not going to spam you. I hate spam. And it's also going to show you how you can get involved with my free boot camp, including access to my free group. So that way you can get feedback on what you're learning. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit more about candlesticks, uh, not uh, not the basics already about, you know, OHLC and that, because again, that's in the, in the boot camp just waiting for you. Today, I'm going to go in a little bit deeper and talk about some dojis and a couple of other really cool things you may not have heard about before. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Oop, that's not that one. There we go. Share screen. Perfect. Okay. So I'm pulling up my notes so I can stay on track. All right, so spinning tops. Spinning tops aren't just the little dreidels or anything like that in a children's game. It's actually a type of candle. And what you will normally see from these types of candles will be something like this. Oops, there we go. Oh, I guess it doesn't. That's fine. So you'll have a small body. Um, solid color, please. Hmm. Fine. <laughs> Imagine that being filled. <laughs> All right, so you have small bodies, and you have little wicks. They're, they will normally be um, straighter. So as you know, wicks are basically... Um, that they go either above or below the, op the open or the closed, depending on which type of bar you're looking at. If you're going by the traditional view of an empty or open bar like this being your buy candle, right, with the high up here, the close, the open, the low, or the opposite direction, the high, open, close, low, right? <clears throat> These are your spinning tops. And so this basically means that um, nobody has the upper hand. They're, they're no, the buyers didn't win, the sellers didn't win. It was just kind of like a free-for-all and nobody won. The reason why that happens is because let's say you're in this buy, right? Um, over here, one, two, three, four. Over here on the left side, you have your buy. And it starts here. So that means it went all the way up, possibly all the way down, and then right back up here again. Or... It could have gone down and then all the way up and then back here to close. So again, it's a very small body, which means it didn't move very much between open and close. And then the buyers and the sellers kind of pitted it out, but nobody really won. Okay. So these are indications of, oops, no, there we go. 
of possible reversals, all right? So if you see these, you need to make sure that you are looking at other um, indicators, other um, strategies, not necessarily strategies, but other ways to confirm that these are reversal because that's usually what they indicate, but obviously past results not typical. They don't guarantee nor dictate your future success. This is just an example and what they traditionally and normally represent. Okay, so those are spinning tops. What we have after that, or I guess in conjunction with that, are mariboza. A mariboza looks like this. Where did it, there we go. So you might have candles that look like this. And again, just imagine one is filled in. So this is open. I'm sorry, this is a buy right? This is a cell based off of this one. So Mirabozas, which are spelled this way, M-A-R-U-B-O-Z-A, Mirabosa. Oh, make it a little bit bigger for you because I can't really see what the screen looks like right now. So Mirabosa. This basically means that there is zero wicks, no wicks, nothing to be seen. You're open on your buy, right, your open on your buy is also your low on your buy candle. Your close on your buy candle is your high of your buy candle. The open on your sell is the high and the close on your sell is the low. All right, so that is a mariboza. It's basically all body. So usually you'll see these at the at the beginning of a continuation pattern or of a reversal, okay? So mariboza is either continuation, right, or reversal. So when you see these, again, you want to confirm with other indicators, other confirmations about what's going on, but traditionally your mariboza's are, are the beginning of continuation patterns or reversals. Okay, so next we have our dojis. Dojis are pretty freaking amazing. Um, I am currently going through some of the training on um, a couple of things that I have invested into, and they can be very, very powerful. So um, if you want to know about the educational system, the platform that I use that contains like over 60 plus hours each week of live mentorship, an incredible team to help answer your questions, and tools to help you pinpoint great trades, definitely hit me up. There should be either a link above or below this video, possibly maybe on my blog if you're watching it there, um, but definitely just hit me up if you want that information. So a doji can look one of four ways. So you might have a line. I know it's not really... Um, very straight. Sorry about that. So you might have a line like this where it looks like a plus. This is called a long-legged doji. Um, let's, yeah, let's do this. Ooh, not that big. <laughs> let's go with 28s. Long-legged doji. Right, so that's that one. And then you might have one that looks like this. This is called a dragonfly doji. Dragonfly doji. You might have one that looks like this. And this is called a gravestone doji. Now they may have other um, names as well, but this is um, just the four main, um, oh gosh, whatever they're called. <laughs> And this is called a four price doji. So the reason why it's four price is because your open, close, high, and low are all the same, right? On your long-legged doji, so let's change that color here. So on your long-legged doji, your open and close are about the same or very, very close together. And then your high and your low, if it, if it were a... Um, actually, yeah, that'd be for either, either sell or buy. <laughs> so you got your long-legged doji. You have your open, close, and high all around the same um, price. And then a, a wick right here, right? So that's your dragonfly. Your gravestone has your open, close, and low at the bottom, right? And then you've got your wick that goes up to the, to the top. So what exactly does that mean? Let me go back just a second. No, no, there we go. 
So long legged doji. This is very much like what I showed you earlier with the spinning tops. Um, if this was a buy candle, right, it would have gone up, down, and back to the middle, or it could have gone down, up, and then back to the middle, which again, um, nobody's winning. They're, they're really pushing for it, or they're both pushing for it. Your dragonfly doji, if this were a... Um, it just it just means that it started up here, it went down, and it was pushed all the way back up to the top, right? So that means that your buyers had more of an upper hand because it was able to push the sellers back, but it doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean that they won, right? Your Greystone Doji, um, it starts here at the bottom, goes up, and comes back down, right? So this means that your sellers had more of a, of a push than your buyers, and your four press doji means that there was no movement. There just there wasn't anything going on with that. So a doji indicates indecision or struggle and is essentially a draw between your buyers and sellers. Okay. So one thing to keep in mind is that if this comes after the the Meru Mara Mara Meru Bozus, right? Those long candles without wicks, right? Whichever if it, if it, if they come after one of these Meru, Meru Bozus, then that means that the the strong ones were becoming weak. So if you had let's say a, a Meru Bozu with some type of doji, that means that the buyers are now becoming weak. Okay? And then vice versa for the sellers. All right. Um, so basically while they do indicate that these are um, potential reversals, right? Um, you want to make sure that you always check your confirmations because it might not be, right? So the reason why that is is because you and I, we're retail traders. We're not the ones that are actually pushing the market. That would be your market makers. Your market makers are the banks, the billionaires, the people who like actually have the money to make these moves. You and I, retail traders, we are we make money by making accurate expect expect Expe accurate expected trades. And that's based off of several different factors, which I'm not going to go into in this video. If you want more information, again, please reach out to me. So other than that, that's what I wanted to share today for my weekly Forex training. If you liked what you saw, please like this video, share it with someone you think should hear it today. If you're on Facebook, there should be a um, follow button up there for you. Oh no, <laughs> looks like my Facebook broadcast got interrupted, but that's okay because I'm recording with OBS. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so be sure to um, turn on the follow for your Facebook. If you're on here if on YouTube, be sure to click on the subscribe button as well as the little bell to be notified when I provide the next training video. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Cassandra, aka the Daily Wealth Ninja. Hope you have a wonderful and prosperous rest of your day and happy trading. <laughs> Bye.